Coin on. Hey there, YouTube Coin community. This is Dustin with CoinOp. Now, today is a holiday here in the States. This is Easter. So if you do celebrate the Easter holiday, happy Easter to you. If you do not celebrate the holiday, well, enjoy your Sunday. Make sure you have an excellent day. Today, we are going to be taking a look at 1970 through 1979 Lincoln Cent varieties. I chose the five most sought after varieties. Now, I will tell you one of them, I just kind of combined a bunch of different varieties. I'll go over that because uh, they're all on the same date. But anyhow, uh, with the 1970 through 79 cent series, most of the sought after varieties tend to be on 1970, 1971, and 1972. So we are going to go over those. We're going to dive right on in. First of all, we are going to take a look at a 1970S small date variety. Now for the 1970S, there are two different date varieties. There's what's known as the small date and what's known as the large date. Uh, the small date, there are a lot less of them minted, so they are worth a small premium. Um, circulated examples tend to trade for a dollar up to 15 bucks. And uncirculated examples tend to trade between $20 and $60. Now, Ken Potter, who, uh, if you're unfamiliar with Ken Potter, Ken Potter was a huge part of Konica. He's a writer for uh, New Mr. News Magazine. He's uh, one of the writers of Strike It Rich with Pocket Change, which is an excellent book, by the way. But anyhow, Ken Potter allowed me to use one of his images on an article he wrote comparing the 1970s small date with the 1970s large date so he let me borrow an image from that i will post a link to his article down in the comments so do make sure you go check it out it's uh, very enlightening i'll give you a lot of information about this now when you are looking for a 1970s small date what you are looking for in uh the 1970 on the date the nine if it's on a small date variety the end of the nine will point directly at the seven if it's not, it will point down towards the S. Another easy way to tell is simply by looking at the word Liberty. On a uh, large date variety, Liberty is nice, bold, and fat. On a small date variety, the L is nice and bold, but the rest of it is really weak and kind of blends into the field. Okay, we are moving on to a 1970S large date. This is a repunched mint mark. This is listed as RPM-001. Uh, clear, evident repunching can be seen on the S mint mark. You can see separation. Now, these examples, if you happen to find one, do trade for about a dollar up to $20 in circulated conditions. And uncirculated examples can trade between $20 to $50, more so for much higher, nicer graded examples. This is a sought after repunch mint mark. This is one of the most popular ones in the 1970s series. Now we are moving on to an expensive variety. This is a 1970S DDO 001, also listed as FS 101. If you happen to have a cherry picker's guide, you'd see it listed as that. Uh, this is quite a scarce variety. There are not very many examples of these out there. These are very tough to find. If you do happen to find one of these, examples that are circulated tend to trade between $200 up to $600, and uncirculated examples trade between $1,500 to $3,000. And once they get above MS65, prices skyrocket on these. As a matter of fact, the example you are looking at is currently up for sale on eBay, and it has an asking price of just over $14,000. Once again, I will post a link to that if you want to watch that auction. I know I cannot personally afford coins on that uh, high end of a level at all, so I do enjoy watching those auctions. I just wish I could participate in them. But anyhow, I will post a link to that if you do decide you want to watch that, or if maybe you wanted to buy a $14,000 coin, well, there you go. Have at it. Um, I would definitely be jealous if you did. Now, with the 1970S, this is a naked eye variety. This is a double die that you can see without a jeweler's loop and without magnification. This is a very, very strong double die. 
In my opinion, it is almost just as strong as the 1969S double die. This is just a beautiful double die. It has a lot of interest. A lot of people desire this one and want it in their collection. Okay, we are moving on to a 1971 double die at verse. This one is listed as DDO-001. This is also a really nice variety. Doubling is very evident on the word Liberty. You can see it clear as day on Liberty. You can also see it in the motto in God We Trust and very slightly on the date. Now, if you do happen to find any of these examples, circulated examples tend to trade between $20 up to $150, and uncirculated examples tend to trade between $200 to $500, and of course, more so for much nicer, higher graded examples. Okay, we are moving on to a very popular, not just double die, but double die series. We are moving on to the 1972. Now the 1972 Double Die Adverse DDO Type 1, DDO-001, which is a Double Die Adverse, is one of the most sought after Double Dies. It's a very popular Double Die. It is listed in the Red Book. But uh, what a lot of people don't seem to realize is that in the 1972 Philadelphia Scent Series, there are a whole bunch of Double Dies for this year. I do believe there is something along the lines of 18 known different double dies for the 1972. Um, double dies one through eight are very nice, uh, highly collectible, and some of them are worth some very nice money. Of course, a DDO-001, the one that everybody knows about, the one that's listed in the red book and cherry pickers and every guide that's imaginable, uh, does fetch some really nice prices, uh, upwards of four to $500 and more so for nicer uncirculated examples. But the one that people need to be looking for is the 1972 DDO-004. It's the type four double die. It is the rarest out of the 72 double dies. Once again, it is a very nice strong double die. Um, there are die markers. There's actually a small rim cud um, next to Liberty that you wanna look for. And there's also some very heavy die scratches all over the reverse and on various places of the coin. Now, if you were to go to a website such as coppercoins.com or doubledie.com or varietyvista.com, all of those sites do have uh, images along with die markers for the Type 4 1972 Double Die. I will tell you now, this is one that I have been searching for personally for a very long time. But if you are searching the 1972s, that's what I mean. I just decided to wrap all the 72s up into one little segment. Um, I guess I could literally just do an entire video just on the 1972 varieties. So if you are out searching for the 1972s, I do recommend pulling up a reference that has all of the known varieties. And when you're checking your uh, 72s, see if you can match some up. Some of them are worth some really nice money. Okay, we are moving on to the bonus coin. This time for a bonus coin, I decided to show you a possible new discovery, and uh, I wanted your opinion on this one. Now, you are taking a look at a 1971. This is believed by me and a few others to be a double die adverse. If you look right next to the one, you can see what looks like remnants from a second one. Um, I do have it circled with arrows pointing at it. Let me know your opinion down in the comments. If you think this is a double die, let me know. If you think this is something else like a die gouge or just some kind of planchet flaw, that's fine too. Just let me know. This one is going to be sent off uh, to be looked at when it comes back. Just like the last one that uh, I mentioned that has been sent off when that comes back. I will let you guys know what uh, they determined it to be. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video. We hope it gave you something to search for. If you would like to support our channel, you can do so by hitting the thumbs up button. The more you hit that thumbs up button, the more it encourages YouTube to share our content with more and more people. Also by subscribing, the more subscribers we have, the more it helps us out as well. Now we do have a website, it is varietyerrors.com. Once again, it is varietyerrors.com. I will post a link down in the comments to it. Something that uh, will be coming up either today or the next couple days, so make sure you look for it. I do have a guidebook on modern Lincoln Sense that I have been working on for quite a few months. 
Um, we're putting the finishing touches on it. May 6th, which happens to be my birthday, we are going to have the official release date for my guidebook. So on our website, we are going to go and post a link. And if you would like to pre-order it, and uh, as soon as it is off the uh, done printing, I will autograph a copy and mail it immediately out to you. You can be one of the first to get it fresh off the press. Now, if you would like to, you can pre-order between either tonight or tomorrow, whenever the link is posted, all the way up until May 6th. And then after May 6th, it'll be up for regular sale through our website and Amazon and other places such as that. So do keep your eyes open for it. It is a comprehensive guide on modern Lincoln Sense, which would be 1959 till current. I do have varieties listed in here that are not listed in other guidebooks. Just uh, keep your eyes open for it. Now, if you have not been to our uh, coin op group on Facebook, feel free to head on over, join up, join in the fun, check it out. Uh, it is not a sales group, so don't, don't go there trying to sell. But if you do decide to join up with the group, do keep in mind that there are people under the age of 18 in the group as well. So keep everything family friendly and have fun. Post images, ask questions. Um, me and a few other people will gladly answer your questions for you. I will post a link to the CoinOp Facebook group as well. Once again, thank you for your review. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great holiday.